smiling at home. Everybody in the studio is smiling too. You are all so happy. You must have just come back from a dim sum brunch. In China, brunch means a lot more than between breakfast and lunch. To us Chinese, brunch means a big lunch. But seriously, dim sum brunch is a very, very unique idea of serving food for breakfast as well as for lunch. You start it out around 4 or 5 o'clock in some restaurant. They open around 5, 6 o'clock. You eat until 3 o'clock. And then you serve a variety of different delicious morsels. It can be deep fried, it can be steamed. Nobody ever really know what the origin and the history of dim sum. Basically what it is, whatever's left over, you chop them all up, you put them in, in the little dumpling. You can pan fry them, you can braise them, you can deep fry them, you can steam them, and you can serve them in this, what you call the dim sum brunch. Here, the first thing I want to show you is something very, very unique, very interesting, very easy to do. Everybody knows that in a Chinese dim sum restaurant, there are all kinds of stuff. They are spring roll, wonton, everybody is uh, familiar. But some of those are a lot less familiar. Dim sum, the key to dim sum is the variety. When you touch your heart, you should touch your heart lightly, like this. Not like this. This will give you a heart attack. <laughs> the idea, variety, means a lot of turnover in food. Which brings us to my first dim sum dish. I call it golden meat field turnovers. Here, all you have to do is use glutinous rice. Use glutinous rice flour. It looks like this in packages. You can buy them and they are nice flour. They have the very similar consistency and the coarseness of regular wheat flour. What you do is you make it into a dough with approximately two to two thirds a cup of wheat flour and about one and a half to two cups of glutinous rice. Just use about three quarter cup of hot water and then use about one cup of boiling water or just regular cold water. Mix them up, make it into a dough. After you make it into a dough, you shape them into little balls like this. Look at this, little ball. Of course, you can also add a tiny bit of salt to give a little taste to the dough. And then after that, you shape them into, this is how the Chinese do it. You shape them into a little pancake, small pancake like this. Everybody can see that? Okay. If you want, you can even roll it up with a little rolling pin. See, tiny bit of this flour. And then you can roll it up like this. But make sure they are not too dry, otherwise it will crack, okay? The Chinese normally would prefer to do it by using the finger. Do it like this, do it like this, okay? Shape it and make sure you have enough. Do about three or four of these at one time. Don't do it all of them in the last minute. Set it aside, put it over here, and then you have to make the filling, okay? Here, we turn the heat up, and I use approximately, let me get some oil over here. <coughs> we have a little oil. Always get ready some oil. The farther you put away, the more exercise you do. <laughs> we'll put it over here, stir, and then I'm gonna use approximately half a pound of ground pork. Stir. Because you've got to make the filling, okay? And then some dry shrimp, about a quarter of a cup dry shrimp. About half a cup of water chestnut and about half a cup or three tablespoons of black mushroom. Soak them in water for half an hour and then chop them all up. And then also don't forget to put two to three green onion. Chop them up, thinly slice, okay? Stir fry them, stir fry them. And then add white pepper or black pepper, 
soy sauce, about two tablespoons of soy sauce, about one tablespoon of wine, and a tiny, tiny bit of sesame seed oil, about one teaspoon at the most, okay? And after this, you got a nice feeling like this. Can you see that? You shut it off, and then you put it in the fridge and let it cool down a little bit because when it's too hot, it would not be convenient. It would be too hot to fold it because the moisture. So you got to set it and put it, let it cool down. Now, in the meantime, I want to show you how easy it is to fold one. Right before you fold this, you heat up your wok because you're going to do some deep frying. Look at this. You put about one teaspoon to one tablespoon of this filling. If you put too much, you not only you do not, you're not able to close it, it would look like Don thing is nine months pregnant. <laughs> okay? You see how to do it? You fold it, fold it into a little half moon shape. Little moons like this. I remember when I was growing up, I loved to have this. That was many, many moons ago. <laughs> fold it like this. Can you see that? Half. And then if you want to make it fancy, you can use a little fork. Go one, two, three four, five, six. Then shape into a little nice turnover like this. Now, after this, you have to deep fry it, okay? We'll put this over here and deep fry this. Make sure the oil is about 360 degree to 375 degree, but not too hot. If it's too hot, the done thing outside will be burned, inside will be cold. So make sure. Then we remove all of these. So, now, after this is done, I want to show you, this is beautiful. I want to show you how it looks. This is beautiful. When it's nice and done, it will look like this is golden meat filled dumpling. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. Now, how many of you have been to a dim sum restaurant? For those who have never been there, let me take you there. Dim sum is a smorgasbord on wheels. The waitress call out what is available on the cart. Some dishes are steamed like the ha gao and siu mai. Some are deep fried like the spring rolls. She'll even cut it for you. This is my cousin. See the handsome resemblance? Mmm, good. Look at all these different type of dim sum. These guys are going to try everything. They are real connoisseurs. There are over a hundred variety of dim sum. This tool will be here for a long time. I just got a card from those two. They are still in the restaurant, hot at work. I don't know how, many, how much longer they're gonna stick around. They probably have, in order to try about a hundred variety, they probably be there for about two years. Dim sum is more popular in southern part of China. In fact, you go to northern part of China, there's no such thing as dim sum. In fact, in big Chinese restaurants where they serve dim sum, dim sum departments, a lot, lot of people, because everything is made by hand, manually. And because of the variety, you cannot make too many and try to freeze them. In good restaurant, there's no such thing as frozen dim sum. Everything is made to order. They make it that particular day. So dim sum chef normally go over there and go back to work about maybe about 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, and then they can open around 8. Now, you start, see the thing is, the variety is the key of dim sum. When you add dim sum, when you order dim sum, you want to make sure everything is nice and it's fresh and steamy. So you should not really make this ahead of time and try to freeze them. Of course, you can do that. I'm going to add a tiny bit of steam to this show. So I'm going to make a, one of the, my favorite called steam juicy bun. Or you can call it juicy steam bun. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> and I start with the dough, which I use one package of yeast, and also about half a cup of boiling water. Or use warm water, because you got to dissolve the yeast and let the yeast dissolve a little bit. And then you use approximately two cups of wheat flour, about two tablespoons of sugar, and about one to one and a half tablespoon of lard or shortening. Make it into smooth dough, let it set, let it rise a little bit and push it down. And then you end up having dough 
roll it up into long cylindrical, and then you cut it into about one inch ball. Then shape it in the ball, and I will show you how easy it is to shape it. In the meantime, you can, ahead of time, everybody can see. One, turn around, one, 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 one. When you do it, you gotta keep on saying one, 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 one to remind yourself you're actually doing something. <laughs> one, 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 one. It should be perfectly round, like this. Look at this. It should be perfectly round. What I'm doing is I'm rolling the edge so when I fold it, it's perfect. Now, when this is done, I get ready this feeling, this feeling. I have a quarter of a cup of broth, which I dissolve with some gelatin, okay? And then also some ground pork. It depends on what kind of buns that you want to make. This is choy yuk bao. You use ground pork. Use about a quarter of a pound, some green onion, and a tiny bit of egg. Let's put some egg. Okay. And also use about one egg. Mix them all up. And also use some salt, about half a teaspoon of salt, tiny bit of sugar, and then some cornstarch. Mix them all up. If you want, you can even chop up some garlic to put in there. Also, you want to put a tiny, tiny bit of soy sauce and a tiny, tiny bit. Make sure it's enough juice because you call it juicy steamed bun. Okay? Mix them all up. This is how the Chinese do it. This is how they exercise. <laughs> See this? Can you see this? Nice into a thing like this. And then you use this and use a little scoop or spoon. You put this right in here. You see this? And then you hold on to this and you go one, two. Now the most important thing is you should not have too much. Otherwise, three. Now this is going to be too much. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You fold it into a little bun like this, shape into a bun, and then you put it over here. Now, I have done a few of these ahead of time. What you're going to do is, after this is done, you can shape about 10 or 15, depends on how many people. You should have about three or four of these for each guest. And then you put it, this little bamboo steamer. Okay, let's put this one, two, three, four, five. And then close it up. And then we're going to steam this in this nice, wonderful steamer. Heat it up to boiling, and then let it steam for about 12 to 15 minutes, okay? In the meantime, I want to show you another very simple dish. Everybody know that chicken in China is called gai. Egg in China is called dan. Gai dan means chicken egg. Here, I have, I want to show you how to make something called dan tat, egg custard. Here, I have, some pastry dough here, which I shape ahead of time. When you have per magnetic personality, like me, <laughs> the guy thinks it's going like this. You see this? I'm going to set this, I fold this ahead of time and put it in the fridge, OK? This particular pastry dough have a tiny bit of lard, unsalted butter. You can use salted butter, but I use unsalted butter. About a quarter of a cup of unsalted butter and about one egg and also one to three quarter a cup of flour and a tiny bit of vanilla flavor. And also, I use a tiny, tiny bit of ice water so to make sure when I work with it, it's easier to work with the dough. And then, for the filling, I have approximately two thirds a cup of boiling water, nice hot water. Also, approximately two thirds of a cup of sugar. Mix it up. You can use a little bit more water if you want. And then also, I have a tiny bit, tiny bit of vanilla. And then also have a tiny bit of evaporated milk. Mix them all up. With this whisk, some egg. Okay. You do not have to add too much. I use approximately, let me put this away, four eggs. That's all you need, about four eggs. Mix it all up. And then you filter through this because you, don't, you want to make sure you get a nice smooth texture. Filter through this. 
Look at this. And then, when it comes out, you're going to fill this up. Let me remove these and put this over here. And then, we're going to have wonderful things. Fill this up very, very carefully. Then you bake them very carefully. You should do it right next to the oven. Don't hold on to this and run around the block. <laughs> because look at how wonderful. When this is done, you fill them all up. When this is done, and you bake them approximately 45 minutes, about 300 to 325 degrees. And then it will come out magical, like this. Look at this. When it's done, very important. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't that magical? When it's done, you set it over there, you have the tan tat. This is the tat tin. <laughs> Remind me of my own name, Martin. Tat tin. This is also done, I will show you. You never, never do this like this. Always remove to make sure the heat is turned off. Then you open it like this. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at this. What goes best with dim sum? Tea. In fact, in Chinese, yam cha means going to dim sum lunch. Yam means drink. Cha means tea. Now, when you say, let's go to have dim sum, we say, let's go yam cha. What is yam cha? In fact, but for us, drinking tea is not just a bag on a string. I'm going to show you how the Chinese drink tea. They have been doing it for thousands of years. Here you start with a tea set like this. You can have any set. This is a gorgeous looking set, wood carving set. This tea set includes a tea bowl and a tea pot, tea pitcher, tea funnel, and all these tea cups. If you have six people, you have six little baby tea cups. And then gorgeous looking expensive tea. And they even have teaspoon. Everybody knows this is a teaspoon made from bamboo. <laughs> First, you put it into this little funnel because this is about $85 a pound. So you don't want to lose any of these, OK? And then you warm up your teapot. See, this is a teapot. See, you warm up your teapot like this. And then you use the water from the teapot. You warm up your tea pitcher. You want to make sure everything is warm. And then with the tea pitcher, you want to warm up your tea cup. Why you have to warm up teapot, tea pitcher, tea cup, <laughs> and everything? Because you want to make sure when you're enjoying the tea, everything is nice and warm. Because when it's warm, it's more aromatic, you see? Warm up all of these. OK, look at this. This is boiling, rolling water. And then this is a tea bowl. You put this for <laughs> waste water, so you don't have to go all over 3,000 miles to figure out where I'm going to put this. We're going to put it right here, OK? This can hold 16,000 gallons. <laughs> and then the next thing I want to show you is use a tea spoon put the tea through this tea funnel. This way, you don't waste any tea leaf. You use about half the volume of tea with about this much, about one portion of tea. Hot water, one to two. And then you put this back. Now the first brew, you do not drink the first brew because the first one, you basically loosen up, rehydrate the tea leaf, and loosen up the tea leaf to release the aroma. OK? And then, this is how you do it. This time, we are going to brew it for about 50 seconds. The good tea leaf, you can brew it for approximately 10 times. Cheap tea leaf, one time. You see this? We put this because we don't want the first brew. The teacup is already hot. Look at this. And then, when this is hot, about 50 seconds, you put this. Instead of pulling the tea right from the tea cup or teapot to the tea cup, you put it into the tea pitcher first. 
Why do you do that? If you put the tea directly into this, the first cup will be lighter. The last cup will be a lot richer, a lot darker. That means it's not uniform. So you do it from the tea pitcher. So this way, every single cup with the same strength, the same color, same uniform. And then you hold on to it and you go, mmm, <laughs> this is a cup of tea. Cheers! <laughs> now, this is called Yang Ta, but I'm going to show you how to do a very exciting, very exciting dim sum I call Quill Egg Siu Mai. This one you can steam it or you can deep fry it. This is wonderful because this is Quill Egg. I start with Quill Egg. This is the live, fresh Quill Egg. You can also buy them in little cans like this, or you can buy them fresh in the market. And then this is the wrapper. You can buy them. Don't bother to make them. Of course, if you have a little um, pasta machine, you can make it your own. This is the regular one-ton wrappers, square. And this is the round, seal my wrappers, OK? All you have to do is mix. I want to show you the ingredient. Mix about a quarter of a pound of ground pork, quarter of a pound of shrimp, tiny bit of chopped water chestnut or bamboo shoot, season it with soy sauce, about a tablespoon of soy sauce, a teaspoon of sesame seed oil, and a tiny, tiny bit of cooking wine, and a tiny bit of pepper. Mix them all up. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to fold this, OK? Here, you have a little dough. This round dough. If you don't have this round dough, you just trim the square dough into a round dough. Makes no difference. You put this over here, run a little quill egg right here. Can you see that? Right in the center. And then you shape this right like this. Can you see this? And then if you are hungry, you put more in here. If you're extra hungry, you put more. You open the pouch like this, OK? You open the pouch like this. Now, the important thing is make sure this is open so you can see everything inside. Look at this. Nice and everything inside. Can you see that? Everybody see, right? Then you turn it upside down. Here, you can see everything. It's just like an open-ended deal. Make sure you fold it up like this. Now, I'm going to do a couple extra ones, OK? Big ones, small ones, it doesn't make any difference. And then, after that, you put it in a steamer and let it steam for approximately 12 minutes or until it's done. You put it over here. Let's do another one. So this way, we all have enough to eat. Look at this. Can everybody see that? You shape it like this, shape it like this, and it looks like this. Can everybody see that? It looks cute. Now, after this, we'll put this, this is a bamboo steamer. We're going to steam this over here and steam them. While we're steaming them, I'm going to show you some of the wonderful dim sum variety. In fact, I just bought the whole thing from a dim sum restaurant. <laughs> I start with this favorite. When you steam this, you know that they shrink a little bit. This is the siu, quill wick siu mai. You can see the quill sticking out. It looks really cute. And this little steamer like this, this is a restaurant steamer. You can put a whole bunch of these. Here is the quill wick siu mai. Come over here is the taro root dumpling. You deep fry it, they're very freaky. The dough is from taro root. And this is very interesting. This is black sesame seed roll, sweet. And this is curry meat fill pastry. You bake them. And this is everybody's favorite. This is the spring roll. And this is, tastes and looks like rice frisbee, but it's actually make out long strands of flour. And then sesame seed, and then honey. And then you pack them all up, and you cut it into squares like this. Here we have stuffed bell pepper. And let me see what we have here. Wow, this is one of my favorite. This is ha gao shrimp dumpling. This is wonderful because you see, you can actually see through this. You see the shrimp, the dough is translucent because this is made from wheat starch. Wheat starch is only available in Chinese store or oriental store. You cannot find it in supermarkets. They, you, have, you start with wheat flour. Then you wash all the protein away, the gluten away. What is left is the wheat starch. In fact, a lot of the Chinese dim sum variety, they use wheat starch to do use as a dough. Now I want to show you 
Remember I said, variety is the key to dim sum. This is my favorite. Wow, look at this. This is braised chicken feet. <laughs> Want to shake hand? Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Not only I have enough for myself, I have enough for everybody in the studio. <laughs> chicken feet, anyone? <laughs> Not only that, we might even have enough to send it to you. I thank you very much for joining me today. As I always said, if Yen can cook, so can you. Join in. Thank you very much.